All set, I take it. We finished what we could. Delivered supplies, tracked down escaped animals. Trivial tasks as they may be. That's enough, don't you think? If there was anything more important still undone, that would be a problem in itself. The vessel is essentially ready for departure. All that remains is to load the final batch of supplies and see everyone on board. Once we've readied the ether burner, that is. Ah, had a feeling we might find you all here. Our consultations with the Loperets, too, have run their course. Pleased I am to say that our researchers' concerns have for the most part been allayed, though some insist on making adjustments to the very end. For their part, Living Way and her peers have graciously offered to stay and keep the people company, lest any lingering queries go unanswered. All that remains is to wait for the refined adamantite. Alphano, are you there? It's me, Kryle. Your special delivery has arrived. Round up everyone and come to the harbour at once. Speak of the devil. Let us go at once. Forgive the intrusion, Master Fortuna. I bring urgent news. A great commotion has broken out in Scholar's Harbor. Your presence is requested with all speed. Now, where might this delivery be? Oh. I'm sure it's very important, but we cannot accept these without the proper permits. By the Twelve? Surely, these can't all be... Bleeding hellfire! They're bringing them by sea and by air! All these folks in these crates! And more on the way. You've got your adamantite right here. A bigger haul than any of these sorry bastards brought, and that's no lie. Yes, because you were charged with seeing the shipments from Gridania and Uldar here, along with your own. Give credit where credit is due. Sounds like the sorry whinging of a sore loser. An hypocrite to boot. Ain't no way a scrawny whelp like you took a dozen steps inside a Dalaman shard. I'll have you know I went all the way to the entrance. I played a vital role in keeping a lookout whilst our expeditionary forces secured the adamantite. Left you outside so you wouldn't get anyone killed, did they? Well then, credit where credit's due, you did a right fine job sitting on your ass. Take that back. Make me. I will not stoop to your level. My, what a grand welcome party. Hancock and Saraban. We come bearing relics both sacred and elegant, as well as a few other gifts that may be of help, to be presented with best wishes from the Eastern Alliance. I myself have come with a sacred relic of the Kojin. 
Upon learning of your need, Bunchen bade me deliver it on behalf of the Blue with all haste. Fearing I could not swim here with the necessary speed, however, I thought to beg our Confederate allies for aid. To my delight, Hancock was already preparing for departure at the selfsame port, and had space for additional cargo. We did, of course, need quite the impressive vessel to get it all here in time. That is all wonderful to hear, but what of the extraordinary cost? I shudder to think of the ransom we must pay for such a bounty. <laughs> Fret not for your coin purse, young Alphano. Lord Lollorito looks ever towards the profits of the future, and thus the East Aldenard Trading Company went to some lengths to reduce the financial liability. And since the Scions funded the entire venture, not a gill need be rendered up in compensation. Everything is already yours. We funded the venture? When? <laughs> Don't let the name fool you. This coin keeper knows a thing or two about spending. When it comes to capital investiture, a sprinkling of gill here and there will not do. You need enough savings to make waves when it really counts, which is why frugality is paramount. We also had the benefit of a generous patron. Generous being rather an understatement. She has supported us from the shadows since the very founding of the Scions. Ere we even had coffers to fill. Mother! A million. I remain, of course, an entirely neutral party. I simply thought our family's coffers were needlessly full. We can hardly take them with us on your teeny tiny toy boat now, can we? And would be a shame to leave all that hard-earned wealth unspent. Waste, Waste not! not. However did you manage so much in so short a time, though? We expected word to reach only a fraction of our allies. Did I not tell you I have my ways? Erinville! You were involved too! I received a letter from Cryon after we parted ways in Labyrinthos. She explained what the science were trying to accomplish and why you might soon require the services of the Gleaners, spread across the world as we are. I pray you do not interpret this as a betrayal of Charlotte. I accept that the form's aim in pushing us to our limits was to preserve what knowledge we have, and I bear you no ill will for it. Yet, in collecting that knowledge, what I came to appreciate most about our star is that there remains so much we do not know. That is why I chose to help the Scions, to combat the obliteration of those countless, undiscovered wonders. I held no illusions that they would be less demanding taskmasters, though, rest assured, if I had, I would have been sorely disappointed. To make a long story short, the whole of the guildship cooperated to ensure your call was heard far and wide. What's this about a ship that can fly to the moon? And why didn't you mention it sooner? The one time you don't beg my aid, your problem's a bloody ship that can fly to the moon. 
See it. You brought the team. Of course. Garland Ironworks finest. You need only point us towards my new favorite ship. As you like us not suspect, we've also brought Adamantite for Mordona's Dalamud Shard. I admit to some consternation upon first receiving Kral's message. So few Scions remain at the Rising Stones now. Far too few for such an expedition. However, the Gleaners were able to secure us reinforcements. Idleshire's treasure hunters not least among them. Fascinating as all this is, I fail to see how it explains your presence here. Does Razat Han not have more pressing concerns? We do. Yet averting the final days would be the most expedient solution. That, and I am indebted to you. Though they chose to take their leave of Thavnair, those you saved in Galimud remain my people. My gratitude is beyond words. It is appropriate that I aid you in kind. If in the doing we bring salvation to others of this star, so much the better. You will recall that I spoke of my father, Midgard Sumer, and his journey across the great expanse. As he traveled betwixt the stars, his resplendent scales drank of the ether in those nigh empty surrounds and imparted to him the strength to persevere. Thinking they might further your cause, I called out to my kin for consent. Ashdaya's answer was silence, as ever. Tiamat and Chris Velgre, however, responded favorably to the suggestion. My sire, too, gave his assent. Thus have I brought you his own worm scales. Fit them to your purpose, and seek a worthier fate for us all. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone else so familiar with the unique properties of dragon scales. So I invited myself along. Look at me, this is so unbelievable. I've gone right back round to believing it again. Forget a 6% gain in efficiency. Of all these goodies, we could get 7. No, 10. No, 14 bleeding percent. <gasps> Think of how far we could go. What we could do with that much power. What we could blow up. If Kokol is duly convinced, then it must be true. In which case, the science end of the bargain has been fulfilled. Would you not agree? Yes, Father? I know not what you seek of Hydaelyn, nor for what purpose you would take command of our ship. Yet this much is certain. To do so will be to dictate the fate of this star and the lives upon it. The lives of each and every creature, in their magnitude and their fragility. Do you understand? And are you prepared? We have seen and we have felt how much each life shapes this world. And so we are determined to abandon none. We understand what is at stake. And we are prepared to bear this burden. <sighs> the 
than I. I will bear it with you. I beg you, share your struggles with me. As family. You grasped my fingers with such tiny hands the day you were born. I thought my heart might burst. It was love and happiness beyond expression. Overwhelming, and a conviction so powerful that I trembled with something close to rage. I had heard the final days foretold. I swore to myself then and there that I would not let them steal your futures. The great exodus would succeed, must succeed. No sacrifice or sin was worse than the alternative. If anything gave me pause, it was mine own father. The Archon Louis Soir openly decried Charlien's policies, a perspective which I regarded with increasing disdain as I grew older. Yet even as part of me thought him a fool, perhaps I also hoped that he, of all people, would devise a brilliant means to save my children. A naive hope, but stubborn enough that I could never bring myself to keep you apart. No, that was his doing, when he perished at Cartano. As we pulled that twisted slab of Dalamud from the sea, I remembered the warmth of your newborn touch. Chastened, I vowed never again to suffer any interference in my mission to protect you. No matter that you yourselves wished otherwise. Detest me, fight me tooth and nail. I would suffer it, and more, and be satisfied so long as I could force you onto the ship. <laughs> I was wrong. You two have grown so much stronger and so much wiser than I dared dream. You have earned the right to walk your own path, and already begun to do so. Good. Because there are things we care about, and people we love, and none of them is replaceable. Not a one. It cannot have been an easy journey for you to have come so far. We shall be glad to acquaint you with the finer details someday, once this danger has passed. All that we have seen and heard, that we have felt and learned in our travels. Ours is not a kind world, but it is beautiful. Always. Oh no. Are you quite sure that's wise? After all, someone turns pale and flees the room when he sees so much as an envelope containing word of your adventures. Whatever will happen if he learns what you were really up to. Amelians. Though I have wronged my children most gravely, I owe you an apology as well. I assumed that it was the Scion's influence that made them so keen to charge headlong into danger. Yours in particular. I see now that said influence instead brought them together with the many fine people gathered here today. 
In which case, I hope you continue to guide them. If we finish loitering about the harbor, might I suggest we put our plans into motion? People are beginning to look confused. Perhaps you can spare a few words ere they resume the tedious lugging of cargo. You have no small number of friends and admirers here, after all. Your assistance is appreciated. Now, in an orderly fashion, if you please.
I stand ever ready. Seems in order with the lens, and I trust you can hear me. Those things are pure malcontent, the residue of lives unfulfilled.
flow of ether. It will guide you. The ether is too dense. Oh, I'm losing you.
if I may. You cannot stop us!
Many faces have I wore, but this is my favorite by far! You will persist in this folly no longer!
My very essence begins to wane. Sweet, sweet agony. Leave this to her. Come to deal the coup de gras. Good. <laughs> Watching you struggle against the inevitable is bad comedy. Erase me from existence, soul and all. you know that name? <laughs> then it was you, in Elpis, with them at Suck. <laughs> The final pieces fall into place. <laughs> In my halcyon days, as the mortal Amon, I was haunted by a dream. Night after night, the faceless multitude, the voiceless cries, shards of shattered memories. But slowly, the fog began to clear. This was Alpis, and I, I was Hermes. Recurring though it was, I paid this dream little heed. It was only when I was granted the seat and memories of Van Daniel that I knew these visions to be true. They were the memories of Hermes that he himself erased using the power of Kairos. Or so he thought. In his attempt to burn away the events of that fateful day, he succeeded only in searing them more deeply into his soul. My soul. Death failed to expunge them, no matter how many times it came. Rebirth after rebirth, from one Van Daniel to the next. I wonder, is Emmet Selk adrift somewhere in this ethereal sea? In defeat, finally remembering your time together in Elpis. How it must gall him! To be entrusted with knowledge of the final days, only to be rendered powerless to act upon it. So many lifetimes dedicated to restoring his beloved Amarok in blissful ignorance. Oh, folly. But make no mistake. My life as Hermes is not the reason I invited the world's end. I have lived. I have struggled. I have dredged the very depths of despair. And in the detritus of existence, I found the truth. I served a great ruler, powerful beyond measure. The world, his dominion. Yet even he and his vast empire were destined to fall. To become one with oblivion. At the end of life's journey, 
lies only death. So I ask you, why live at all? We betray, we torment, we murder. We are wicked, spiteful creatures, without exception. If life is so sacred, so precious, why fill it with such misery? Man wallows in a hell of his own making without purpose or meaning. To live is to suffer, and I would end that suffering by my own hand. It matters not if it flies in the face of all believed right and just. Death is the only solution! That is my truth, my answer to the question, and yet... Even as the words pass my lips, I am filled with doubt. Has my search reached its end? Was this the only way? After all these years... Is this... the answer I was hoping for? The Lamentations of the Damned. How it fixes it to see your conviction falter at the last. Van Dan, still clinging to existence, I see. You, who champion death so fervently, unwilling to accept your own, refusing to be purified and swept into the sea of souls. As do I. We prisoners to metal, watching as the world turns. Though unlike me, you will be spared the ignorance of having your corpse made a puppet, dancing to another's tune. Is that... Arsahi? How very astute. But let me be clear, I have not come to consort with the likes of you. Nor have I come to bemoan the state of the world following my untimely demise. In fact, I delight in mankind's downfall and the anguish it brings the savior of the savages. If I played some small part in the chaos, all the better. Not that I was in any position to resist. But to be made accomplice to the betrayal of Lord Xenos. I would die a thousand deaths to exact my vengeance. Now you are at my mercy. I shall drag us both into oblivion, and you will never see the fulfillment of your magnum opus. Even should you be reborn, your desperate search for answers must start again. What might that be? 
<laughs> My wish is all but granted. To die and take you all with me. Don't try to follow me. I had more of you people than I could stomach in life. Never mind in death. Likewise, I pray we do not meet again. <laughs> you had better hope not. Come. Hydalin is waiting. Brave travelers, I welcome you. I see. Thou didst journey unto Elpis. And now, the rivers of time converge. I know why you have come. Yet I would hear you speak your reasons all the same. You created the moon to deliver mankind from the final days. But is that really how it has to end? We do not wish to abandon this world. We want to protect the source and all of its shards. To flee is but one of two paths. The other leadeth to Meteon, far beyond the stars where she doth chant creation's requiem. Her domain is formed of dynamis, pure, absolute. Where emotion and memory govern all, ether will avail you naught. Meteon hath gathered the pain and despair of countless stars, and to go unprepared is to go unto your doom. We'll beat her. We'll win. I swear it. Is what I might have said once. After everything I've seen, all the times I've succumbed to my own anger and fear. I can no longer pretend that courage and faith will be enough. But are we truly so powerless that our only choice is to flee? Far from it, my child. Long ago, the inhabitants of myriad stars, many more prosperous than Atheris, sought to free their worlds from life's woes. 
sorrow and anger, conflict and hostility, despair, and even death itself. But as Meteon reported, every attempt ended in failure. Darkness abideth within every living being and can never be cast out. Neither reason nor faith can challenge this immutable truth. To live is to suffer. And in suffering, find strength and purpose and hope. As you have done so many times before, Thou dost pursue an impossible dream, yet knowing this, you pursue it nevertheless, and thou hast learned to depend on others as they do thee. Thy yearning for the power to save the powerless hath ever driven thee to greater heights. Thou hast grown strong. Though those closest to thee no longer walketh by thy side, their love remaineth thy guiding light. For duty's sake, thou hast been bound by truths unutterable time and time again. Yet thy heart hath never wavered, as thy companions will attest. In thy pursuit of mysteries great, all thou believest is brought into question. Undaunted, thy thirst for knowledge remaineth unquenched. The fires of hatred that once burned in thy heart burneth no more. From their ashes doth spring the light of love, warm, and pure. As witness to black calamity, thou despaired at man's helplessness. Resolved, thou didst unite a distant world on the brink of collapse. And thou, my champion, when all did seem lost, thou never abandoned hope. For every trial and every foe that did bar thy way, thou hast proven equal to the challenge, drawing courage from the many bonds forged on thy journey. You have all known despair, and though the end approaches, you walk on, heads held high. Therein lieth your power, the strength to silence the song of oblivion. Then there is a means to confront her. Yes, if you should prove yourselves worthy. Hark! Nigh impossible is it to send mortals to the edge of the universe. Should you fail, there will be no second chance. As the will of the star, I ask of you this. Do you possess the fortitude to stand firm when all around you doth crumble? Do you possess the faith to vanquish despair itself? Should you lack the strength to best a supreme deity, I cannot allow you to make the journey. 
You must leave this star and never return. Prepare yourselves. Prove ourselves worthy, eh? Sounds straightforward enough. Aye. No room for confusion there. In any case, we've come too far to back down now. I am of the same mind. What power I have, I shall bring to bear. The three of you seem to be forgetting who we're up against. It's not every day we battle a divine being of untold power. Well, not quite every day. Do try not to get underfoot. Needless to say, there'll be no margin for error. Let us hold nothing back. For the people of this world and those beyond the rift! Alas, the question I pose to thee in Elpis hath remained unanswered these long years. I would hear thy response, warrior of light, shouldst thou emerge victorious. <laughs>